it's uh but what I love about this this time period we're in and the situation is it, it's not incumbent upon me to bring justice. The Lord will do that. That's not my job. My job is not to to you know hold their feet to the fire. My job is not to hate them in anger. No, that's got to, that's that's a complete distraction. My job is not to really even acknowledge any more them, like them and us. Them and us is irrelevant. So thank God for that. Uh, my job is not to be a referee in all this bickering going on online between the uh, various factions of the MAGA movement, which is now in complete disarray and chaos, just like the White House. It's not my job to straighten it out, folks. I've been talking about, you know, <laughs> the funny fe- the feedback I get is, everything's great, Seth. What are you talking about? <laughs> and that's the feedback that I've gotten. I mean, and no, no, it's, it's, it's not possible. People can't be that deluded. Oh, yes, they can. And they all say they believe in Jesus. And they all say they're, they have prophetic gifts. And they all say they're tied into the real nitty gritty of what's really going on. It can't be what you're saying, Zeph. Uh, it can't be. It's, 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 things are, yes, how are they now today, huh? How are they? Now that you're, you know, you, 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 uh, Effing losers are waking up out of your uh, your QAnon delusion and your you know your 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 LARPing fest, you know like like the whole thing is some sort of you know Jason Bourne game. What's the matter with you? Now look what you've all done. I mean, look where you are now. You're back in bed, pulling the covers over your head, with no confidence in anything, because you lost your faith, and that's the cost of this curse. Well, you know, it's not like you weren't warned. It's not like there weren't signs. It's not like there wasn't evidence. So, you know, you've got no one to blame but yourself. But, you know, going back to bed, you know, being a victim, you're, you're a perpetrator, not a victim. Why don't you just take responsibility and own up to it? I've never seen any Christian in America ever take any responsibility for any false statements they've made. I mean, I have, but I mean, to me, it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm a, what, I'm the loser anyway. So who, can, what reputation, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, I think the Christians might be the most deluded of all. And it may be because, you know, there's this thing, you know, it's like, it's like we seem to deny ever, the gifts of the Spirit across the board. And we don't receive them and we don't acknowledge them. I don't know, really know what we're doing here. I mean, we're fighting each other. I mean, I know that. Over, you know, what's going to happen next and whose interpretation of Scripture and you know, uh, uh, you know, if someone ever, you know, if, I mean, you can have prophetic gifts, you know, and have the gifts of the spirit and say things that are not, you know, say things that uh, you're feeling, you're sensing, and then some other thing happens that doesn't happen the way you exactly said it. But what happens is, um, you, you know, there was uh, an intervention, something, you know, warning about things that you see coming that are ac- accurate. But I mean, it's careens off another way. And they go, you weren't accurate. I can never listen to you again. That's not the way it is. When people have prophetic gifts, they're very sensitive to things going on in the spirit. They're just describing what they see. They're not guessing. They're not predicting. We don't predict. When we, but if we do predict, we're going to be wrong. But there, if someone has prophetic gifts and, they're, and they predict something and they're wrong, it doesn't matter. You know, what matters is that they, they predict, you know, there, there's a difference between describing what you see in the spirit and making a prediction. Making a prediction is a carnal act. It's got nothing to do with the, with the fruit of the Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, describing what you see in the Spirit because God is letting you see it, that's a prophetic act based on a gift that God's given you or that vision. And it, you may have it today, and it might not be there tomorrow. It might be there two days from now. But the people have decided to shut you out anyway across the board, and they're never going to listen to you again. 
uh, to their own detriment. But is it detriment that they wake up and the nuke hits and they're gone? I mean, maybe it's better that way. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I would love to go around to each person and ask them if they think they can stand before God right now proudly. You know, without cowering. I don't mean pride. I mean, you know, proudly meaning as a human being thinking you did a good job. Yes, I know. The ones who are raising their hands saying, I can. These are the ones that right there that are in the, the most serious trouble. All of you, like me, are, are scared to raise your hand. You guys are, 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 are keeping the flame for the Lord. Don't worry, the leaders of the of the church system, the 501c3 Babylonian system of churchianity, they're all raising their hand, right? They're all they're all lined up. I can stand before God. I've done nothing wrong. I've really built the kingdom. I went on mission trips to, to here and there and Timbuktu and wherever else. And so, you know, I can stand before the Lord. I kid you not. And they're all they're all they're they're trying to butt in line. Who's, who's going to be the judge first? No fear of God, no trembling at all, no problem. But you and I, we're not so sure. And that's exactly, and I'm just, I'm just hooked up here, so you better listen. That is exactly where God wants you to be. You're right on it. You're not sure. You've made some mistakes. You thought you were right on things, but your faith has faltered here and there. You're just never going to be able to say you did good. Even if you've done stellar work, you just can't quite, you still feel so flawed. You still feel like you don't really measure up. You're the ones God's recruited. The other ones that I just described have been rejected. That's why they raise their hands like fools. You know, this is a little test. I would love to conduct this test with a big crowd of people, like a hundred thousand people. You know, and then and then lay it on them, right? The old the 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 old reverso, right? Where you just go, all you guys that ran up here to the stage, you're rejected. Goodbye. And the ones left, the ones that remain, they would be the re- recruited for for the for the kingdom and for the missions of God, because it does no good putting someone on a mission who thinks he's got God nailed. Okay. It does no good sending him to where? Where? Some some uncivilized place in the world? Where would that be? <laughs> you know? Most of the time, those people go on missions, it's the, the people they're ministering to end up ministering to them because they're just so completely faithless. I mean, if there's a struggle, at times get hard, you know? So, uh, it's a just a dang just interesting thing, but, you know, Jesus said it best. What did Jesus say? The last will be first, the first will be last, right? You raise your hand like an idiot and go run to the front of the line, where do you think you're going to go? You're ready to stand before God by Jove. You're ready to stand right there and be judged. You are ready to be judged because you have really lit it up for the kingdom, baby. You really got it now. You're famous. You're like... uh, You know, you worked your way up in the ranks, you know, in the alternative uh, Babylonian world system, too, called uh, uh, copycat Christianity of the Babylonian system, which which, uh, then substitutes for the actual uh, people of God, which are not the people of God, but the Babylonians pretending to be of God in order to dupe the masses and populations into conforming to their twisted view of reality, which is based on, you know, human trafficking, pedophilia, endless wars, et cetera, et cetera, and, they're, and, they're, and they give consent to it in order to have a seat at the table, and then they think they're the stellar stars of God because they did it all in the church system. I just almost want to throw up at thinking, I don't want to think about it that deeply, you know, that they're not worth it, but I mean, some, they're, I know what you're saying, okay. There has to be justice, friends, and God is going to bring his justice. The goats and the sheep here are going to be separated. And the people that have been guilty of all that stuff, including your gang stalking, which is all part and parcel of all this, they're going to be adjudicated by God. You just 
They're going to be judged by the Almighty God. You, I don't know if it's going to be enough justice for you in your heart to where you can rejoice, but you know, it's said in the in the Revelation uh, chapter eighteen. It says, you know, rejoice for 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 God has avenged you. You know that He has to avenge all the killing of the prophets and the prophets of old. You know, they were rejected by society too. They only brought him in when they wanted to get a word, and then if the guy, you know, a lot of times. You know, they would lose their lives, uh, obviously, when they said something, the king or whoever didn't want to hear it. And then that was the end of that. You know, they're, they're welcome one day and then, you know, the, the, uh, kicked out another. But they're never accepted in society, the prophets of old, never. You know, and uh, there was John the Baptist who prophesied Jesus, right? He was, uh, you know, the greatest. And, and, and look what happened to him. I mean, you know, he was... He's, he was known and everyone revered him as a man of God and they trembled at his presence in a way, you know, and he was the Baptist and he was doing that work. And then uh, he was so important, actually, that they, you know, that uh, Salome, you know, calls for his head, for Herod, Herod to, to give her, give the 16-year-old a nice birthday present. But, I mean, people knew him, you know, obviously. And he knew, even prophesied his own death, he was like, he knew he had to go because Jesus had to rise up, and so John had to shrink so Jesus could ra rise. And he happily went. And Jesus said, this is Elijah. And look, Elijah has put together, you know, the, the, the lambs. He's put together the lambs of God. He's gathered the lambs, and then Jesus takes over, right? He, he, he reunites the sons and the fathers, which to me is all about the healing of the church as it is, you know, that's described in the beginning of the book of Revelation about the flaws in the churches. Elijah heals that and then hands it over to the Lord in this spiritual epiphany that goes on called the return of Christ, which is a very violent affair, actually. You know, it has to do with justice, more as much as anything else right setting the setting the balances straight right weighing the world as to who did good and who did wrong setting the record straight avenging the innocent ones who lost their lives for no good reason when people grieve You know, people are mean to a person. They, they, they reject them from their family. They, they, they grieve. They grieve. And uh, those of you who've had that, and you've been the black sheep, and you've been the, the rejected one, and the one that, you know, you, you know you, you're hanging around. You look, it doesn't even matter what I say. I could be just an absolute awful person here, and you'd still be there because you relate to me, and I relate to you. Right? And so you allow me to be my bad self, whatever, you know, maybe sometimes I'm not exactly, today I'm on, I'm on, you know, I know when I'm not on though, too. And so the light's on today. <laughs> light's on, so, you know, let's soak it up. Anyway, I'm here to tell you that you will be satisfied one day. You will be satiated with, with the balances being corrected. You will see the righting of the wrong that was your life was wronged and, and, and there needs to be justice. And that justice will come with, with the Lord. It's, it's hard to describe because it's so, on so many different levels, you know, it's, it's so uh, multi-faceted, uh, you know, the way things work with God that it's hard to, you can't follow exactly, you know, but, uh, you will be, um, avenged you know god will you know set that free so i know you can't let it go you know you try and you say i forgive everyone and i love everyone and all that but that thing still see there's a need in you for justice you need that justice 
And no matter how much you do lovey dovey, you try to adopt, you know, worst thing you could do is go to church where they tell you to put on all this exterior fruit, like you're, you're, you know, like you're the, the ultimate Jesus guy, you know, and when it's all exterior glued on, you know, inside you, you, you look, they'll kick you out of the church for your, if they think you're harboring some kind of animus about the world, because they are the world. They're afraid you're going to fight, you're going to strike back. Maybe you'll pick up a gun and shoot them all. You know, they're, they're worried about not knowing what you're going to do. Because they're the conformed ones. They're the ones God has rejected. Yet they run the churches. I understand how insane that is. But because you should be, you know, running the church, not them. You're one of the priests of God, not them. You should be there, but you're not. Look, you're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Some of you are immature, too, and not ready for something like that. But I'm just saying, you know, I'm talking about just like the, 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 the who you are, what you are. Not acknowledged on this earth. Who you are, what you are, your gifts have been thrown down the toilet. Who you are, what you are, everything you have to contribute has been... They don't want what you have to contribute because what you have to contribute makes them feel guilty, okay? If they let you contribute, then they will feel guilty in mass. Don't you see why? So they act like you're the worst thing there is. They, they say a bunch of bad things about you and make sure you're completely neutralized and you have no place to go or they don't even mention your name. They just blot it out like you don't exist because you make them feel guilty. They tell you to go to the psychiatrist, you to get the Christian counseling, you to, to go in for extra prayer, you, when you're the one who should be leading the prayer and telling them not them telling you. It's completely backwards to what it should be. And most of you don't even know who you are. It sounds pretty good, though, what I'm saying, right? It's not going to solve it. It just it just fe feels a little more like, you know, a little bit of salve on the wound, right? A little bit of comfort for, for, for your troubled, for your troubles. Uh, the world's never going to relent. They're just going to, you know, take the best and put it out and take the st the cornerstone and kick it out even if the whole building falls down. You understand? They're not going to accept you. They did not accept the Son of God and ev all the lambs are rejected. The lambs should be the priests. They should be the pastors. They should be the leaders, but they're not. And, and they go, well, look, you've never contributed anything. No, you were not allowed to contribute. That's a very important distinction. And Lord, I stand here as a witness before you and all humanity that this must be entered into the record. They were never allowed to, 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 to use their gifts. They were never allowed to contribute. They were never allowed to put their shoulder to the plow. They were ripped off the plow and thrown in the mud and told, no, your effort's not wanted here. These other people, they are, but not you. And so then they said, what works do you have to stand on? And you say, I'm just trying to get the mud off me and say, well, you've done nothing. Look, we've ministered all over the world. We've done missions to India and Egypt and here and there and the Muslim world and all over the place. Look, what do you have to say? All you have is just mud on you. You're nobody before God. What makes you think God's going to honor you? So I enter into the record for all humanity, and I know they're so stupid, they don't even know what I'm saying. It's okay. Dumb as a box of rocks. Bottom line is, I enter into the record, Lord, and you know that when we do this, we're, we're not playing games, okay, that they were never allowed to use their gifts. They were thrown in the toilet. They were never allowed to be more than just trying to get the mud off of themselves. And then they were pointed at and shunned and scorned as losers, ne'er-do-wells, non-contributors, when all they wanted to do was contribute, but it was not allowed because of who they are, which is yours. Only non-children of God can... <laughs> no, seriously, it's it's been... I, I don't know why it's so clear today, but it's 
this has been nagging at me for a long time. I don't know why it's so clear today, but I entered into the court record that you can't blame people or judge them for, for works that they, they would gladly do any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Now you see the problem of humanity, right? The reason that they don't want you to do the work is because your presence makes them feel guilty. Now we have to get into that, Lord, this next phase. Why do you suppose they reject the lambs of God and then laugh at them when they have no works as derelicts? Why do you suppose they do something so beyond evil it's almost incomprehensible? It makes Satan blush, that's what I'm saying. Because they, not, not, I'm not going to call them demon-possessed or anything else, they, humanity, human, the way they are, because they feel guilty, because they are guilty, they persecute, kill, destroy any and all children of God, and then say they are the children of God. And that's the big, snafu thing going on earth so if that's you ladies and gentlemen children whoever please don't feel bad you know they are the ones that need to feel bad not you they put you out you didn't put yourself out they rejected you So when you're standing in a, in a court of law, okay, and say it's God's court of law and he's the judge, and then they go, you know, by your works, you'll be judged. You know, remember when I was sitting in John MacArthur's church? <laughs> There's a loser if there ever was one. There's a guy that needs to be a janitor, not, not a preacher. Anyway, bottom line is, he goes, I want to do everything I can do, works, 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 you know, so I don't end up being a lowly janitor in heaven. But seriously, he wants to be a leader in heaven, whatever that is. What, are his, what, what I mean is whatever his interpretation of that is. He wants to be somebody, so he's going to do all he can do. The only problem is, being caught up in secret societies and, and all the stuff that uh, that whole church is caught up in, uh, there's little room or time for God. In other words, they think all their works, uh, they, they think their, their crap doesn't stink. They think all their works are just a sweet aroma uh, wafting up to heaven and that heaven can't wait to receive them. They can't, they are ready to put Billy Graham in the, uh, in the rotunda while he preached that Romania is free of oppression while Richard Wormbrandt sat in chains underneath him in a Romanian prison. Yeah, that happened. I'm sorry to have to report that. I, I, I wish I could just give Billy Graham a clean bill of health. But he got the highest honors America could give. And look, a complete, look what happened. Look what really happened versus what, what, you know, see what I mean? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I was almost giving some people a pass that, you know, they're, we're never going to be able to get along, though. I mean, we're never really going to be on the same page, you know. It's never going to be okay. It's never going to be all right. And may I just say this in my defense? I'm not the one making it not all right. I'm the one willing to work. I like working. I, I'm ready to put my shoulder to the plow. But they wouldn't let me. They said, no, we, we don't, you know, so that you could then what? Scapegoat me. You could not allow the shoulder to the plow and then say, look, what have you done? conveniently forgetting my heart, my offer, my intention, my will. Throwing that all down the garbage can, too. 
basically aborting me as a living sacrifice walking upon the earth, unable to contribute to, say, Christianity. Not like Billy Graham. So Elijah comes. No, and you know, and my story is, you know, it's not a story. It's, it's a story of, you know, the people of God. It's just the typical story of many, many people. Many millions of people share the exact same testimony that I just gave you. Not even a testimony. It's just a general generalization. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just generalizing here about the situation and the need for what? That's right, adjudication. This needs to be, the, because not, not even one of you, not even one of you can get this thing out of your craw. You, the, Jesus says, forgive, you've done everything you could to forgive, but this thing just sits there. It just needs to be, it needs to be dealt with. And the only one that can deal with it is the Lord. And it's just an open wound, and it's, it prevents you from being able to have pretty much any joy in life at all. It prevents you from being able to do anything. It prevents you from being able to move forward. But may I just say it? You did not put it there. They wronged you. And, and, and even though you're nice to them and you're, you go to their prayer meetings and you, you try to be nice and interact, you know you don't belong there, right? You're not the one making yourself feel like you don't belong. They're giving you the go away vibe because you make them feel guilty. I tell you that. I, this is the one thing they don't want to feel. They want to feel like they are sons and daughters of the Most High God and that they've done a good job so they can't afford to look at that dirty laundry. That's you. They can't afford to look at that because it would wreck their whole uh, their whole self-view of themselves. So they must get rid of you in order for them to be the holier than thou and you know, to be the, the holy, holy, holy people. Once they're rid of you, then they can, you know, it's just like, uh, you don't want them to see your retarded uh, brother or something, you know, so you hide him in the basement. And, uh, you know, it's that's a wrong. You've, it's, it's an incredible wrongdoing. And it need, that needs to be adjudicated. There needs to be justice for that brother that was put in the basement. And uh, so far, you know, just grappling for metaphors here, so far, the church has not dealt with their great egregious crime. Their hands are still bloody from killing Christ. And they think they're the exalted ones. There's something very wrong, very, very wrong here, folks. This is why all the atheists and all the you know the political winds have gone against the church so much because of this particular problem, why it's been weakened in America, why people are flying under the radar. They know it's wrong, and they know there's something wrong with those 501c3 approved pastors. They know there's something wrong with the church system here. They know there's something wrong with all of it. You know, but I, I watched... Uh, I watch, I realize I can't go there. There's a line. I'm not really allowed to be on that other side of the line with them. And it's just, you know, they. I just watched a Christian movie last night made by Kevin Sorbo and Sean Hannity, uh, executive produced it. These are all good guys, right? Sam Sorbo, Kevin's wife, was the uh, played the wife in the, in the movie. Uh, you know, it was pretty, it was, you know, not plotted particularly well, but it had a very good message and all that. And, but it was from the system. It was from Babylon. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to say that, but it will, it is, I, I, I'm sorry. I wish I could say this. Hey, something real happened. <laughs> You know, it's real. I mean, it's real intent. I mean, these people really seriously believe that they're straight up with the Lord. They don't know about this. What I'm talking about is they don't, I guess they don't acknowledge it. 
they don't acknowledge there's something I must be, you know, they all wanted me to say, you know, I, I Zeph, am mistaken. I, I, I guess I just, you know, had a spirit of rejection. And now that I'm over that, I'm all lovey dovey, ready to have a big embrace. And, and the Lord says, no, there has to be justice. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, geez. This thing can't be healed by just having a warm embrace. Because it goes to the core, you see, the very core of existence, you see. It goes to the very cornerstone of humanity, which is Jesus. So it just can't be erased. When you join them, you kill him. I just don't see how we get around this 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 weird problem. Like I say, one time I heard this guy that you know, and and all these so Christian leaders, you know, they're most of them self proclaimed, or they've been to school, or they've been, you know, that it is some kind of commercial industry. I mean, I you know, let's not paint it as some kind of you know, innocent thing that they don't know what they're doing. You know, they know what they're doing. There was a lamb that called in this guy's show. He was, you know, he's a famous guy. I forget his name now. Paul McGuire, I guess. Another big famous guy. He calls in and he goes, you know, they don't want me. He's talking about this issue, but he doesn't know that he, what he is. He doesn't know there's other people like him. He doesn't know the whole story. He just feels that he's being rejected. He's trying to fellowship with people. He's trying to get along, but they're all rejecting him. He says, so he goes and he sits on the top of mountains. He stares off because he, he doesn't feel welcome anywhere else. And Paul McGuire suggested, and I kid you not, rather than prayer, that this young man... This troubled young man that doesn't understand, he doesn't understand like we do because we've been, you know, working this side of that. We've been trying to understand for a long time. We've, we've pieced it together. See. A thing they didn't want us to do. You realize that, huh? Uh, so this guy, <laughs> Paul McGuire told him, well, you need to go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> I, no, I, we could, I, I threw the radio across the room, of course. I slammed that radio off. It was 1999 or something, you know, 2000, around in there, right around the, prior to 9-11. Anyway, I never was so mad in my life because I, I felt like I kind of related to that kid. He was just trying to fit in. He didn't do a damn thing wrong. There's, he was like my brother. They did the same thing to him. And... uh you know, go to a psychiatrist. I mean, it wasn't even like go to a Christian counseling. And I knew that there was a stain on Paul McGuire. I knew there was unfinished business with Paul McGuire and God. I realized that's why he's so inaccurate on his prophecies. He's got a curse on him. And then eventually I tuned out, you know, I didn't, tune in much, but I, I hear him make some stupid prediction or another. He's not, you know, not quite as bad as certain people we've mentioned here, but, you know, just pretty much the same churchianity kind of vibe, you know, the sort of, you know, oh, I'm thinking this, it must be a holy thing, or I've had a dream, and this is, I better put it out, because for all you millions of people to understand what a, what God is doing, you know, and, and all that, and I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, help me, help me. Please deliver me from having ever listened to Paul McGuire. Oh, please, in Jesus' name, uh, let me forget that that ever happened. <laughs> well, Paul McGuire loves Trump. He's got all the right politics, of course. Why Why should I be mad at him? We're on the same page, right? Nah, it's time to, you know, we, we've, we've got to just sort of call it, call it right now because, you know, Trump is basically, you know, he's, you know, this this whole thing is going up in a conflagration, so we better... Get it straight. I have never felt that I could participate on a one-to-one -one relationship with people that back Trump like I'm one of them. I've always known there was a line, you know. I've always known there was, you know, there's. I mean, the 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 evangelical Christians is what I mean that that back Trump, not not just. But I've always known there was a an issue, and it gets fought out mainly in a church setting. 
it's not so much out there among, say, secular people that back Trump or something. You're conservative. I'm conservative. We like the, you know, we don't seem to have conflicts. We could get along just fine. It's just in this particular milieu that there's a real problem here. And uh, I think it just goes all the way back to the beginning. It goes back to Cain and Abel, you know what I mean? Trying to sweep that under the rug. It, it, it just goes back to the very beginning of humanity. And God has to adjudicate it. And he's waiting, you know, to, to as long as he can, because when he does, it's going to be an awful bloody affair. You know, it's not going to be, you know, an Armageddon bypass and into the New Age with Gaia and the Sanandas and the QAnons and all that. LARPing along, making everything a big LARP, a big sci-fi, a big spy novel. I mean, this is just, uh, these people that get caught up in this are absolute losers, you know. They just don't seem to understand the difference between truth and a lie being played and, and being led by the nose into some, you know, the same people that, you know, they, they'll go to this, they come into town with their real estate scams and you go sit there and they, they, they shake everybody down for a bunch of money. Then they're gone. You can't sue them. You know what I mean? And then you get nothing for your, the real estate course. You're supposed to make millions and you get left holding the bag. I mean, that's, they come here every once in a while to the convention center and I see them and I go, oh, there'll be a whole new batch of suckers ready to go. You know, I, I, and I've, I've tried in every which way I could to explain this for the last three or four months about this whole thing, but there's so many fires that had to be put out besides that one. You know, there was that one, right, the, the sort of, you know, LARPing off the off the cliff into doom, and and then there's there was like, you know, all this bickering, and then there was the whole Scientology incursion, and there's a whole, well, now it's all in shambles, so I guess everyone ought to be happy. You, you did a great job. It's wrecked. Uh, no, you'll never have anyone say it's wrecked. It's me. I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm describing what I see. Wrecked. Get it. W-R-E-C-K-E-D, right? Wrecked. Not as in reckoning. I mean wrecked. And uh, so I'm not surprised that Mueller's making his move. That's right. He's going to start indicting ham sandwiches. He's indicting for, he's actually lying. And he's indicting people based on lies. It doesn't matter. They're going to jail anyway. It's just so awful and so evil. I feel like we live in the Inquisition. They're the Inquisition and the Nazi Gestapo and the USSR and Kafka. And I feel like, you know, and the Black Book of Communism all at once. One of the reasons it's going down is just because people are just not getting it. They just aren't getting it, man. They just gone back 